good evening and i welcome you students i am talking and going to solve chemistry theory 043 12th chemistry cbsc sample paper already i have solved section a section b they are available in the youtube students you can go to my youtube channel and watch it also you can watch my other video lectures for the 12th class course they are available in the youtube today is the last a uh, session which i am taking section c today i am going to solve section c question number 12 case based carrying five marks it is important that i have given a separate video for this because i want to tell you that how will you solve case based questions there are paragraphs we have to read them thoroughly and after reading them we have to give our answer as the trends are very clear the present cbse syllabus the present cbse examination system is oriented based on how much you have learned how much knowledge you have it is not based on mugging there is no need of mugging students understanding the basic concepts is very very important so if you understand and read the ncert book each and every word each and every line clearly thoroughly and all the formulas which are given there all the reactions which have been given there then it the paper will become very easy for you so stay focused pay attention pay attention your learning is directly proportional to the attention which you pay the more you attend the more you focus the more you concentrate you will get the answer the whole game is think before you answer the question try to read it very carefully unless you understand a question you will never get an answer so the important point is the more energy should be given to understand the question if you understood it clearly answers are answered 50% already so what i am trying to say already instructions have been given which we have already given in youtube our first section a section b we have already discussed what are the instructions all questions are compulsory internal choices have been given and there are very short question, answer questions short answers and case based case based so today i am talking of case based question let us see what is a case based question which is available this is section c is on the screen it question number 12 what is say student i am going to make my pen red read the passage given below answer the questions that follow that follow students so let us see pay attention are there nuclear reaction going in your bodies nuclear reaction student naturally the first question will be what are nuclear reactions you are aware that all the reactions which i have been talking which we are doing in our chemistry lab in our normal industries or chemical factories these are chemical reactions and you have seen in chemical reactions there are reactants reactants react to form the products and new chemical reaction means new new substances are formed so there is a chemical change which takes place and in the chemical change in the chemical reaction you see the valence electrons are participating you have been told that the electrons in the outermost shell valence electron decide the chemi chemical reactions now here we are talking of nuclear reaction you are aware that there is a nucleus in every atom the nucleus contains student neutrons and protons and they are held by very strong forces which are called nuclear forces so ordinarily nuclear reactions doesn't take place ordinarily they are you have heard about nuclear reactors uh, and there we are doing performing nuclear reactions they do not take place in ordinary chemistry lab so very important nuclear reactions the nuclear reactions will involve student nucleons neutrons or protons the nucleus the nucleus because the binding energy is very high they are very strongly bound there are nuclear reaction constantly occurring in our bodies are you aware of this that you have a body chemical reactions you are aware when you eat your food metabolism reaction is taking place you know digestion of the food glucose gets oxidized to carbon dioxide water energy is produced in the cells of the body you already know you are made up of trillions of cells there are chemical reactions which are taking place but did you knew that there are nuclear reactions they are occurring in your bodies but very few of them compared to chemical reactions uh, they do not affect our bodies much look if the nuclear reactions will affect our bodies what will happen we won't survive all of the physical processes that take place it to keep a human body running are chemical processes that's what i'm saying what is a chemical reaction substance 
two or more substances react to form a new product or one substance produces another new product these are the chemical processes which are taking place like the reaction of the what you have say, uh, said when you respire when you take oxygen carbon uh, glucose is oxidized to produce carbon dioxide and water that is a reaction metabolism reaction which is produces energy for our student to work so mostly chemical processes nucleation reaction can lead to a chemical damage which the body may notice and try to fix if there is a permanent nuclear reaction taking place what will happen student they they can cause a chemical damage the nuclear reaction in our body is a radioactive decay what we are now talking radioactive another word has been used so much knowledge is there in this paragraph radioactive decay certain elements you know they are radioactive you will see in carbon has three isotopes c612 c613 c614 and this carbon isotope is radioactive student radioactive it, um, it is undergoing transformation nuclear reaction so it undergoes a decay it undergoes decay that is c14 isotope so uh, the nuclear reactions are occurring in our body is a radioactive decay radioactive decay is a first order kinetics we'll see about that this is a change of a less stable nucleus to a more stable nucleus what happens you know the nucleus contains neutrons and protons if the ratio of neutrons and proton is 1 is to 1 then it is a stable nucleus and if the neutrons are more than protons the ratio is disturbed the nucleus become unstable something which is unstable will dissociate to go to a more stable state that's what he is saying uh, the uh, this is a change of less stable less stable nucleus to more stable nucleus every atom has either a stable nucleus or an unstable nucleus when i am saying you have heard about isotopes there are isotopes for example carbon i have said is six three isotopes this has six protons and six neutrons so here the ratio is 1 is to 1 proton neutron ratio this so this is a stable isotope but here you see this has protons six and how many neutrons are there 14 minus 6 8 so this ratio is not 1 is to 1 this is not a stable isotope that's what we are saying so uh, the ratio of neutron and proton in a stable nucleus is around 1 is to 1 i am marking important points of the paragraph read focus mark the important points what is important for small nuclei z is less than 20 carbon has atomic number 6 that atomic number is less than 20 so six protons and six neutron means stable for nitrogen seven neutron and seven proton is stable seven and 14 if i write so nuclei with too many neutrons or too few neutrons or are simply too big are unstable if the number of neutrons becomes very large larger than protons or nucleus becomes big it becomes unstable they eventually transform to stable form through radioactivity so radioactive decay happens because the unstable nucleus forms more stable nucleus so this will lead to a new atomic number a new element is formed students in a nuclear reaction important wherever there are atoms with unstable nuclei radioactive means unstable nuclei there are nuclear reactions occurring naturally natural nuclear reactions are taking place whenever a nucleus is unstable there are so many cases of that you have heard about the story of radium also so they are emitting certain radiations and this reaction continues the interesting thing is that there are very small amounts of radioactive atoms everywhere in your chair in the ground in your food you eat yes in over your body uh, the the amount is very very small that is why we are not affected the amount of radioactive atoms present in our body in the chair in which i am sitting in the ground is very very small therefore they are not doing any damage to us the most common radioactive isotopes in humans we are humans what are those carbon 14 this is i just told you is a radioactive isotope of carbon and it will decay it is unstable you are saying this is unstable student and then it will go it will decay there is this is called a radioactive decay ठीक है, वन इज कार्बन फोर्टी एंड पोटेशियम फोर्टी 
you know what is potassium 40 over 0 i am writing like this this is k this is the atomic number this is the mass number this is also unstable isotope so this will also undergo radioactive decay what we are calling radioactive decay for this body uses carbon 40 and potassium first just like it does normal carbon and in our body there is a very small amount of this very small amount of this and this building them in different parts of the cell without knowing they are radioactive the body does not know they are radioactive but they are there in our body in very very small amounts and are unstable unstable they are decaying and in time carbon 40 decay to form stable nitrogen atoms what happens carbon 14 you are saying this carbon 14 decays to form more stable but it decays to student nitrogen 14 14 is the atomic mass of nitrogen so this is 6 this is 7 and 14 atomic number so it is producing nitrogen which is more stable so here you see the protons in this six neutrons 14 minus six eight the proton neutron ratio is not one is to one so it is not stable but here protons seven and neutrons how many 14 minus seven so proton neutron ratio seven is to seven is one is to one that is a stable you can see the difference what is stable what is not stable so this is one then what is happening potassium 40 building them into different parts so carbon 14 decays to stable and potassium 40 decays to stable calcium atoms this is decaying to c614 is de decaying to 7 and 14 stable and this is decaying to 20 calcium 40 this is a stable this is stable this process is happening in our body in our body chemicals on the body that relied on having carbon 14 and potassium 40 in a certain spot will suddenly have a nitrogen or a calcium so in that part this process will take place such a change damages the chemical normally such changes are rare so the body can repair or damage these changes are we are saying are rare and body has the capacity to change uh, body has a capacity to repair the damage body can repair students the damage very important point learn there's so much learning in this paragraph so much information so much knowledge is there so or filter away or they filter away the chemicals they are filtered away so that no damage is done to us during these radioactive decay when we are alive and when i'm living no problem what is happening the carbon is being converted into nitrogen more stable because this carbon 14 is radioactive isotope is unstable potassium 40 is radioactive is unstable it is decaying into more stable this is my ca is calcium ca is calcium students okay we trying to understand everything see very interesting paragraph very knowledgeable paragraph the natural occurrence of carbon 40 decay in the body is the core principle behind carbon dating student what is carbon dating c14 this isotope is used for dating the old objects as you said carbon 14 is present in every everything but once you are living the amount remains the same because it is used and reproduced but after you are dead or any living thing is dead what will happen thus amount will start decreasing this amount will start decreasing so that is called dating as long as person is alive still eating every carbon 40 decays into nitrogen is replaced with a new c14 so if if something is living what is there c14 decays and reproduced and reproduced so the amount remains the same so slowly the carbon 14 decay to nitrogen without being replaced one person dies if death takes place then carbon 14 cannot be reproduced what will happen this c14 will decay to nitrogen nitrogen 14 seven nitrogen this is six so this is decaying to nitrogen after death what will happen 
then the amount of C14 will start decreasing. It will keep on decreasing. So there will be less C14 in a dead body than a live body. Let it be tree or anything. So the rate at which carbon-14 decays is constant and follows first-order kinetics. Uh, what he says, it follows first-order kinetics. Uh, students, you already know, you have read chemical kinetics chapter, the radioactive reactions are first order and you know what is the rate, rate equation, the rate law of the first order equation, what is the first order rate equation, first order, you have read student, what we write, kt is equal to 2.303 log of c0 by ct. This is the equation already. If you don't know, check the first order kinetics. This is the original concentration. CO is a concentration at time t equal to zero. CT is a concentration of this radioactive isotope after time t, time t. And K is called the specific rates constant. And you also know the formula. K is equal to 0.693 by T half. So if we know the half-life, if we know the half-life, we can calculate the specific rate constant. It follows, it has a half-life of nearly 6,000 years. The half-life is given here now for C14. How much? 6,000 years. So in 6,000 years, it becomes half. It becomes half. Next six years, another half. But it will never become zero. That's why we talk of half-life, first-order reaction, concentration, never become zero. By measuring the relative amounts of C14 in the bone, archaeologists can calculate when the person died. So if I can calculate the amount of C14 in the bone of a dead body, I can say what is the age of that, how, when the person died. All living organisms consume carbon. So carbon dating can be used to date any living organism and any object made from living organism. Either there are objects made from the living organism. So if we can find amount of C14, then we can age it. We can find the date. Bones, wood, leather, and even paper can be accurately dated as long as they first existed within last 60,000 60, years. This is all that nuclear reaction normally occur in living organism. I hope you have understood. I have tried to explain it in very, very great detail. Let us see the questions. Question A is on the screen. Why is carbon-14 radioactive while carbon-12 is not? Question A, how will you say? Let us see, I am writing carbon-14. How many protons are there? P is protons, 6 proton. That is the atomic number. Atomic number is equal to number of protons and number of proton plus neutron is mass number, which is 14. So protons 6, then neutrons will be how much, student? 14 minus 6, 8. So there are 6 protons. And 8 neutron. Proton neutron ratio is 6 is to 8 student, which is 3 is to 4. It is not 1 is to 1. It, the ratio is not 1 is to 1. See here? I'm just saying, student, the proton neutron ratio is not 1 is to 1. Hence, hence I can say C14 is radioactive. Therefore, C14 is radioactive, unstable atom. It is unstable atom. When atom is unstable, it is radioactive. It will decay. It will decay. And you already know that C14 is decaying into nitrogen. This, If I write C614, 7 and 14, it is undergoing radioactive decay. So answer A is given. Let me see the B student. Researchers have uncovered youngest non digester dating around 65 million years ago. How the age of the fossil estimated by using C4 dating. We have already discussed in the paragraph that this is a technique which is used for dating the. So we try to find, we find out the amount of C14 present, then, then that we can give the age of the fossil estimated. Okay. B is answered. C says, which are the two most common radioactive decays happening in the bodies? What we said, one is C14 and other is what we have said, student potassium. You can see the paragraph if you have any doubt. 
so you have c 14 and other is this 40k potassium you have seen these are happening in our body c14 and potassium 40 you already know how we write c614 and potassium atomic number is 1940 so now that next question is coming student what it says suppose an organism has 20 gram of carbon how much 20 gram of carbon of c14 the original concentration this is my original concentration how much 20 gram of c14 isotope okay at the uh, has 20 gram of, at the time of death okay at the time of death he says how much c14 remains after 10 to 1000 years after 10 320 years how much of this will remain how much of this will half life of this already he has given how much is that 6000 years half life is 6000 years student okay now what this is a we know this is a first order kinetics and i have given the formula of the first order what is the formula kt where t is 10000 and 3 2 years is equal to student uh, uh, 2 0.303 log of C original concentration divided by the concentration after time T. So you want to find the CT. Find CT when T is 10, 3, 2, 0 years. So first I, why you have to find the value of K. K is 0.693 by T half. First order kinetics. 0.693 T half is how much? 6,000 years. So this is the value of K. Put the value of K and T here. You will put the value of K and T here. Students, what will you get? The K is 0.693 divided by 6,000 years. And time is how much? 10,302 years. Year and year are cancelling which is equal to 2.303 log of what is the C not value 20 gram and student you have to calculate the value of CT. So this now everything is clear all values I have written except C2. This requires anti log anti log and we are given the value of anti log 0.517 this. So I will substitute this value and then I will get the value of CT by using this i hope the question is answered i will show the marking scheme given by the board also in this matter so there is no difficulty only this mathematical part they have given the value because we we, do, we cannot calculate log this so they have to give the value of this part which they are giving anti log because we have to take anti log to remove the log 0.5172 let us see how the calculation is been done last stage now I am coming to the marking scheme, the answer given by the CBSC. What it says, the ratio of proton to neutron, proton to neutron is 2 is to 3, as we have already shown to you. This is wrong. 2 is to 3, which is, the stable is 1 is to 1. This ratio is not 1 is to 1. Proton neutron ratio in C14, I have already told you how many protons are 6. Protons are 6 and neutrons how many? 8. 14 minus 6, 8. 6 is to 8 is how much? 2. Uh, so you can see pro, uh, proton neutron ratios. Uh, this is my proton, this is my neutron. Neutrons are 8, protons are 6. I have already shown you. So when the ratio is not 1 is to 1, then it is not stable. Age can be estimated by C14 decay, correct? C14 decay to stable nitrogen and potassium decay to calcium. I have shown in complete detail. Now the formula I am using, this one, already I have come to this level. Now here, this equation we have already got and this anti-log values have been given to us. We substitute, substitute and get the final answer, which is coming to be 6.17 gram. Final calculation, they, they, we are not given log tables or anything, then they have to provide us uh, the values for the anti-logs, which have been given.
there is a choice here what is the choice students the choice is that approximately how old is a fossil you have a fossil student how old is this that means you have to find that value of t how old is this with 12 gram of c14 if it initially possessed initial concentration is 32 gram the concentration is 12 grams then how much what is the life or what is the time period time for this and log value is given this is asked for c14 isotope we have given you the formula k t is equal to student 2.303 2.303 log of c not by c t students so k we have already calculated when half life is given to be for c14 half life is how much 6000 years so it takes to become half so what is the value of k then 0.693 by t half which is 0.693 by 6000 years so if i put the values here 0.693 by 6000 year student and how much time uh, you have to calculate the t t we have to calculate is equal to 2.303 log of c not is 32 and log of 12 4 3 the and Four eight the so this is eight by three so what you are getting t is equal to two point three zero three into six thousand years divided by point six nine three into log of eight by three eight by three is a student two point six six seven so log of the log of two point six seven value is given how much Point four two six zero. Point four two six zero. This value is given. Substitute it here. So two point three zero three six thousand years. Point six nine three into log of eight by three is point four two six zero. So you can do the calculation, student. Uh, whatever answer you will get. And let us see the answer given by the CBSC. this is the answer formula half mark you see steps you have to write formula you get give half mark for that correct formula and then you have seen half life if you calculate you are getting another half marks then another half marks so what do you get student half marks like this you are graded so in such question student it is important that you write all the steps all steps units must be mentioned and marks are given for the steps marks are given for correct steps add in numerical you are doing you have to write all the steps all the units otherwise there will be deduction of the marks so the answer is coming to be 8 for 9 years i hope that answers the case based question i have taken so much time to explain to you the paragraph was very knowledgeable very informative and how do we solve questions based on the paragraphs paragraph will be changed but one case study question will be there 100% no mugging is required just concentrate focus read the paragraph very carefully and mark the important points and then apply the science chemistry which you have learned already what chapters you have learned student i hope that answers your question okay thank you very much my best wishes to all the students who are going for 12th chemistry paper and you please subscribe to my channel and if you need any more help and please write it there i will answer your questions thank you very much and my best wishes have a good time bye bye